Before this video begins, I want to give a big shout out to my top tier Patreon supporter, Daoist Soul Weaver. You are a legend. If you want to support the channel beyond the much appreciated like and subscription, then head on over to my Patreon via the link in the description. Now back to the video. Okay, okay, it's finally time to round off the classic cast with what is arguably my most requested video ever. That's right, let's talk about Amy Rose. Amy is a very interesting character to talk about. She has been there since Sonic CD, and even earlier if you want to count her appearance in the Sonic manga, though I bet most of you didn't even know about that, so why am I even mentioning it? Amy is very much a polarizing character, with her writing seeing noticeable shifts throughout the games in a pretty downward spiral, but eh, what's new? But as always, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Let's start from the very beginning and work our way up to the more modern appearances of the character, and yes, I'm going to talk about Frontier's Amy too. Whilst there was the manga, most people consider Sonic CD to be her first appearance back in 1993. Just based off the design alone, she pretty much gave off the vibes of a female Sonic, a very common trope that's used even today to incorporate what is essentially a gender swap of a lead character as a new character. Think of characters like Minnie Mouse or... <laughs> Okay, let's, let's, let's be serious. She was designed to be the love interest for Sonic, but the guys over at Sega thought that it didn't make sense for Sonic to be stuck in a romantic relationship. This led to the one-way infatuation that has become synonymous with the character, with Amy vying for Sonic's attention and Sonic evading her like I evade my taxes. We see this upon running into her in the game where she's magnetized to Sonic with all these hearts and Sonic just couldn't give less of a shit. But after Metal Sonic swoops in and kidnaps Amy, Sonic still goes on a journey and ends up rescuing the titular hedgehog. And notice how Sonic speeds off before Amy can even get a word in. Sonic ain't the type to settle down, but he'll do his best to make sure that Amy is safe. If you are wondering about why Amy was even on Little Planet in the first place, it's because she had a tarot card reading that foretold her having a destined encounter. Yes, you heard me right, Amy reads tarot cards and is actually very much into fortune telling and the like. Though I guess this does mean her fortune did technically come true. Ultimately though, Amy's existence in Sonic CD was to pretty much just be the damsel in distress and to introduce a love interest. She's just the love-starved pink hedgehog and not too much more. It didn't need to be anything major, but it is clear that there was a lot of potential with a character like this. And then we got a bunch of spin-off games for a while where she really didn't do much. A quick drive-by here, a smack across the face here, and suddenly it's 1998 with Sonic Adventure. And not only does Amy become a more major character here, but is one of the six playable characters with her own entire story. And surprise, surprise, it's what many fans consider to be the peak of her character writing. I know Hollywood's absolutely terrified of this, but Amy does this insane thing called going through a character arc. We see genuine growth out of her here. But before we jump into the story, I want to quickly talk about the redesign of the character here. And this was a great choice. I don't hate the old design by any means, but like I said, it just emanated that feel of a female Sonic. She lacked her own identity with the design, and I feel like the redesign here solves that issue by giving her a recognizable design that has successfully lasted in the franchise. Plus, it suits the older status of her character as, for this game, she was aged up to being 12 instead of 8. Wait, she was only 8 years old when she was kidnapped? How the hell is she not traumatized? The story begins with Amy shopping and generally being bored of life as it was beginning to feel mundane. She reminisces over the good old days of Sonic CD because, you know, being kidnapped is fun, apparently. But from this, we do see that Amy does enjoy an adventure. And we do get a quick line about how she misses Sonic, and yes, I'm pointing this out for a reason that I'll get back to later. Shortly after, she runs into an injured Flicky and a large robot that was seemingly chasing her down. She evades the robot and puts two and two together that the Flicky had escaped and that the robot was hunting it down. Instead of whining or writhing in fear, she immediately states that she'll protect the bird and stick with it, giving us a glimpse of her caring nature and heroism. That is until the very next cutscene where she asks Sonic to protect the bird. I still think that she does this not only to spend time with Sonic, but also because who would the bird be safer with than Sonic? After going on a totally consensual date to Twinkle Park, she does eventually get caught by the robot. But one thing that we do see with these early scenes is her reliance on Sonic. She shouts for him multiple times as though she's expecting to be rescued. We can see from these cutscenes that she does have a kind heart, but is still, to an extent, the love-struck hedgehog. Not as crazy as she'll be in the future, but definitely still reliant on her hero. 
So, Amy gets imprisoned on Robotnik's ship and is held captive by the best written character in the game, E-102 Gamma. And yes, I'll be doing a character analysis of this guy. Even in this situation, Amy is prioritizing the Flicky and even stands up to Gamma when he asks her to hand it over. She doesn't even hesitate, even when knowing that she could be hurt. After questioning him, it turns out that Gamma doesn't even know why he has to get the Flicky, it's just his orders. He has to comply with Robotnik. Gamma even states how it's illogical for Amy to have feelings for something she knows nothing about, to which Amy takes pity on him. She talks about how he's missing something because love and emotion isn't part of his robotic being, and these words, alongside viewing the Flicky up close, manage to get through to Gamma. And this ain't the only time we'll see this. Gamma opens up the cell and tells him to escape, much to Amy's surprise, showing us that this wasn't some sneaky plan to try and convince the robot to escape. Amy was just speaking her heart, but it's one kind enough to get through to even a robot. She remarks afterwards that Gamma isn't like the other robots and has some good inside of him, to the point of saying that they could be friends. On the deck of the egg carrier, Robotnik manages to snag the Flicky, and it turns out that the bird has a Chaos Emerald on it, hence why Robotnik was so hell-bent on tracking it down. I also like how, when Sonic appears, Amy still asks for his help, showing that she still has that reliance on the blue blur. He then calls on Gamma, leading to a fight between him and Sonic, and this is where we get to see another brave act on Amy's side, when she stands in front of Gamma and up to Sonic. She stands up to the one person she idolizes and adores more than anyone else in the world, all to protect Gamma, someone she barely knows. And she once again uses her words to convince Sonic to leave this fight. He does do so, and before Amy departs, she talks to Gamma once again to tell him that working under Robotnik is a pretty bad choice, and that leads to him turning on Robotnik, kickstarting his own character arc. Amy was the one who catalyzed that character arc. This is not only a display of her own emotional strength, but also of her loyalty, which is another one of her admirable qualities. But even after this, she still proclaims Sonic as her hero, so there's still some growth left to accomplish. Upon returning to Station Square, Amy has a revelation in that she realizes she is far too dependent on Sonic, a trait that's been displayed with the character consistently since the start of her story. It's one aspect of her character that's been holding her back. She notices that the bird actually has a family thanks to the pendant it was wearing, and so makes it her mission to, even without Sonic, infiltrate Robotnik's base and reunite the Flicky family. And in her quest, she has one final obstacle to overcome, and that is the robot that you've spent the entire game running away from. What an awesome way to show her growth as a character by having her go head to head with something that, as part of the gameplay, you had to actively escape. It makes this fight feel all the more satisfying because it was all building up to this moment. By the end, she declares that she'll make Sonic respect her, showing that she's matured. She's accepted that Sonic doesn't feel the way she does, and seemingly mellowed out those feelings a bit on her end, realizing that she still has more growing to do as a person. She will always have those feelings, but they will no longer be so prominent as to dominate her character. No, we're not there yet. So with Adventure 1, we see Amy go through a character arc. She shows bravery and loyalty to those she wants to help, even putting herself in harm's way to reunite the Bird family. What she accomplishes in the story may not be as grandiose as characters like Sonic, but she still manages to help others, and in doing so, grows as a character herself. We see her go from the naive, one-dimensional, love-struck hedgehog who lacked independence from her hero, into a character who realizes her own potential. She's always had a kind heart and would stick up for those who couldn't, but now, instead of relying on others to fight in her stead, she takes on the enemy herself. She is no longer just a fangirl of Sonic, but has her own path to follow. This is her journey of self-discovery. There is also one major aspect of her character here that I haven't discussed yet, but I'll bring that up a little later. So next up we have Adventure 2, and Amy is still pretty solid here. She definitely has taken a backseat in the story and at times feels a bit out of place, almost as if she's just there to follow the group. However, she has her own moments in the story that justify her appearances in the game. And her having a larger presence in the writing when her character wasn't needed would have just given that feeling of her character being thrown in for the story for no other reason than to just be there. In this game, she showcases her affection for Sonic a lot more than Adventure 1 and yeah, at times it does feel like a bit of a plot device, you know, using her infatuation with Sonic to give her a reason to follow the group. 
This is seen when she would follow Tails because she wants to help Sonic, and only Sonic by the sounds of it. And there are a couple of moments where Amy's IQ really does come into question. I'll take care of the police while you try and find a way out of here. Find Eggman! Got it! The three of you? That means me too! Hey, right! <laughs> she does also get captured by Robotnik, but I can't really be too mad at this because it led into the best scene in the game, so... yeah. But like I said, she does have those couple of moments that justify her being there. The first is when she breaks Sonic out of prison, albeit with trying to get Sonic to marry her in exchange for that freedom first, but honestly it seemed like more of a quick joke than anything serious. Her real big moment though comes from the last story where she speaks with Shadow. At this point, Shadow's fulfilled his mission and the Earth is going to be destroyed as an act of revenge for the death of Maria. But Amy, in similar vein to Gamma, manages to get through to Shadow by appealing to him about the good within humanity, about giving humanity a chance. And it works. Amy is the sole reason that Shadow unlocks his true memory about Maria, and how her wish was for Shadow to save humanity, not take revenge on it. It is because of Amy's good nature and compassion that Shadow helped to fight the final hazard to defend Earth. And it is such a pivotal moment in the story that most people can honestly look past most of Amy's shortcomings in this story. So Adventure 2 is still a pretty good interpretation of the character. It does feel like a slight regression of the character at times, but she still has her moments to show that she's still the same character beneath it all. What needed to be consistent, stayed consistent. But then her character gets completely fucked in Sonic Heroes. Damn, this being my favorite game is starting to make me look bad. Her interpretation here is just god-awful. Her character gets flanderized so badly, with her only trait being her love of Sonic. Her reason for going on this adventure is basically just for Sonic. She spends the game constantly talking about Sonic. She berates others who would even dare to speak negatively about Sonic. God damn it, she actually wants to beat Sonic into submission and force the man to marry her. What, don't believe me? Watch this. Gotcha, my darling Sonic. Amy, what are you doing here? Sonic, this time there's no way out of marrying me. Sonic, give up! This time you're mine! She is 12 years old! That is such a sloppy bit of writing to justify a boss battle against Team Sonic. Why would they even need to fight in the first place? If it's comedy, then I'm sorry, but I found it to be more annoying than funny. People have tried to defend Amy in this game by saying that she's trying to help clear Sonic's name, but we see no evidence of that. And the fact that she would even try to fight him over such a trivial reason is honestly all the more proof that her character has severely regressed in this game. All they had to do was say that she wants to help her friends find Froggy and Chocola, and that would have been enough of a reason for her to go on this journey. That would have been in line with her characteristics that have been clearly established since Sonic Adventure 1. To be fair here, she does show that she wants to help her friends and motivates them to continue on their quest, but those moments are pretty rare, making them seem a bit out of place. This writing almost directly contradicts Amy's promise to herself at the end of Adventure 1. Weirdly enough, before Sonic Heroes even came out, there was a pretty interesting spin-off release called Sonic Battle, and honestly, her portrayal wasn't that much better. Pretty much everything she does revolves around Sonic, and her training Amal is done because she sees it as... Uh, parenting practice? Yeah, no, really. That, that's true. I do like that she works really hard with her training in boxer size to the point of nearly passing out from fatigue, that showed her hardworking nature and want to be stronger, but that was eclipsed by the rest of her character. In Shadow the Hedgehog, she was okay. She was very much a background character, but I did like that she displayed some concern over Cream, but honestly, there isn't too much to be said for this game. But then there is Sonic Rush, and my god, it is not a good look. It's very reminiscent of Heroes with her fawning over Sonic and even getting to the point where he gets treated like the second coming of Christ. How about instead of constantly telling Blaze to go to Sonic, you get up your lazy ass and help? To give credit where credit's due, Amy is pretty well written in Sonic 06. She starts by mistaking Silver for Sonic and then offers to help Silver look for this mystery person, unaware that it was Sonic himself. She still has that affection for Sonic, but it's a lot more laid back and not so domineering. After going through Dusty Desert, Silver finds Sonic and hands his ass to him, and when he's about to finish the job and kill him, Amy stands in the way, giving Sonic a chance to escape. 
She talks with Silver and states that Sonic would never do anything to harm the world and that even if it was true, she would still choose Sonic over the world. That may seem a bit overkill from a surface level, but I think what's just trying to be shown here is that Amy believes that Sonic could never do anything that he was being accused of because of who she knows Sonic to be. These words do get through to Silver though and kickstart his character arc that I discussed in depth in the Silver character analysis, go give that a watch if you haven't. Once again, she uses her words to get through to a character and appeals to the good in him. Amy's character here was also a bit more mellowed out and not very over the top, which I can appreciate. And this would continue into Sonic Unleashed. She fares a fate similar to Tails here where her character writing was actually pretty good, but she is very much a background character. I do enjoy that she wants to actively help out and still carries that kindness and compassion with her crush being an underlying feature. But honestly, that's pretty much all there is to say about Amy pre-2010. A few ups and downs, but when she has her moments, she really does have them. But then there was the 2010s. Oh boy, the 2010s were not a great look for Amy. If you thought she was a background character in Unleashed, then you haven't seen anything yet. For some reason, this decade decided to push all the characters that weren't Sonic off to one side in order to service this new shitty way of writing. She wasn't in colours, granted, but in Generations, like pretty much everyone else, she was a glorified cheerleader and nothing more. She also seems extremely annoying with her infatuation with Sonic to the point where Sonic physically holds her back. In Lost World, she was just there on these random Wii U phone calls between her and Sonic to basically say that the world is getting fucked and... Yeah, that's it. In Sonic Forces, she doesn't really do anything. She honestly feels like she barely has a character here. She beats up a few illusions during the final segments of the game and... Uh, no, that, that... That's it. Amy's appearances here just go back to an issue that I brought up in the Metal Sonic analysis about unnecessarily including a character in the story just for the sake of having them there. It just diminishes the character and ultimately does more harm than good in the long run. Amy's inclusion just feels like a selling point more than anything else. Honestly, you could remove her from any of these games and it wouldn't make a single difference. And don't even get me started on Free Riders. Good God, she was just annoying and obnoxious in that game. Think of pretty much every aspect of a character that didn't work, multiply it by 10, and then bring them all together like an absolutely fucked up Megazord, and you have Amy and Freeriders. She can just be plain annoying at times here. Not to mention that she is just a dick in this game. I really have nothing good to say about her here at all. This has to be, by far, Amy's worst outing as a character. So, things aren't looking too great for her right now, are they? Is there anything that even gets the character halfway right this decade? Well, yeah, it's time to go back to the good old IDW comics. God, I have to say that if it wasn't for these, I would have lost my damn mind with the writing in this franchise years ago. Amy is very well written here, and if fans don't say that Adventure 1 Amy is where she peaks, they will almost always bring up IDW Amy as the counter argument. Here, she's a bit more relaxed, has a genuine purpose in essentially overseeing the resistance, and holds narrative importance. She gets a healthy amount of screen time and doesn't feel annoying or over the top. She can be kind and compassionate, but at the same time shows that she has her own strength in combat even when knowing that she isn't the strongest. She even gets tired from the amount of work she takes on, showing that she is hard working, but isn't some kind of superhero that can do everything. And to top it all off, she still has her love of Sonic, but it's less of an erratic obsession and more of an underlying characteristic. So many people say that the issue with Amy is her adoration of Sonic, but that was never the case. Her undying love was always an aspect of her character, and so that should not be removed. The main problem was how that love was portrayed. We've seen how it can ruin the character or add to it depending on how it's shown and used. This is something that gets praised with her boom counterpart, where most people agree that she's pretty well written. She, once again, has a nice balance of characteristics and her interactions with her friends here feels quite natural for this incarnation of the character. Well, in the TV show that is. It's not perfect, but it's miles better than a lot of the other crap that we've gotten over the years. But beyond all of this, we recently got Sonic Frontiers, and I have so much to say about that game, but to focus on Amy here, I once again think it's a great portrayal of the character. 
Man, Ian Flynn really knows what he's doing, huh? This Amy feels a lot more mature and aged, as though it was a natural continuation of her character arc. She still believes in the power of love, as evident with that short storyline involving the Coco that you have to aid in finding its partner. She's also quite laid back here, but still cares about her friends, as she should. When she's freed, she doesn't just start going off on a gleeful chant about being rescued by her hero or anything, but immediately shows concern for Sonic absorbing the cyber energy and worries that Tails is trapped in similar vein to how she was. This game also takes note in showing that Amy has always been a bit of an insightful character, with Sonic even mentioning this to her when they were talking. Amy even sticks up for Sonic when Sage is talking about how Sonic is endangering the world. Her sticking up for him here isn't out of obsession, it's because Amy knows Sonic's true character, like she did when she defended him in Sonic 06. She even at one point outright states that she may have to step back from Sonic because of what she believes in, even though you can tell it hurts her to say it. Tat's character growth right there, and confirmation that she still has those feelings for Sonic. Her interactions with Sonic here are also pretty good. You'll have noticed that the more obnoxious that Amy acts, the more obnoxious that Sonic has to act in order to deter Amy. It is definitely a character dynamic that didn't make either side look good. But since Amy's a bit more down to earth here, Sonic doesn't need to respond as he has in the past, allowing the two to have a dynamic greater than the simple, she chases him and he runs away. This was something else that was done well in the IDW comics. All her characteristics here just feel like they're wholly blended almost perfectly, and she seems more aged and adult because of it. What a great showing for this character. But there is one more thing that I want to talk about. Remember a while back in the video when I mentioned that Amy had another major aspect to her character? Well, that aspect is her powers, or lack thereof. Amy is, more or less, just a girl. She doesn't have super speed, flight, strength, or even a high intellect. This is even shown in the games where she has to fight using her Pico Pico hammer instead of just going fisticuffs with the others like in Sonic the Fighters for example. And even in Sonic R, whilst everyone else is either running or flying, she just has to use a plain old car. But it's this apparent weakness that makes her compelling. Her not having these powers makes her relatable, and that is something that's been missing with the characters in the games for the longest time. Even in the iterations where she's considered to be the best written, she still had these flaws. She wasn't written as a Mary Sue flawless character that's just boring and uninteresting like Captain Marvel or something. With character writing, it's the flaws that make the characters interesting, and how Amy learned to deal with her flaws with her character arc back in Adventure 1 is what made her so compelling. She's arguably the most human of the Sonic cast, and yet, even with this weakness, she still stands at the side of characters like Sonic, Shadow, and Silver. Her drive to want to help people in spite of this weakness is admirable. That's why her standing up to a robot in Adventure 1 was a defining moment. Not to mention that she even stands up to Silver, who she could see was a very powerful adversary as he had the upper hand on Sonic. Amy, when written correctly, is proof that having no powers doesn't make you powerless. Ultimately, Amy's character has been one hell of a roller coaster, going up and down more than my blood pressure. She was once a naive, narrow-minded kid that idolized her hero to the point of nearing obsession, but then grew from that into someone who understood her own self, realizing that she can't revolve herself around Sonic, especially when Sonic has no intention of returning the favor. She is compassionate, loyal, brave, kind-hearted, and can seemingly see things that others just can't. Sure, she lacks physical strength, but it doesn't matter. With her passion and desire to do good, she doesn't let anything hold her back, even if she has to step away from what she cares about the most. And that is why Amy Rose is actually such a great character, and I cannot wait to see what they do with her, especially after Sonic Frontiers did some major course correction. Well, thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy the video, then feel free to hit that like button and subscribe to keep up with all future content. If you really enjoyed the video and want to go above and beyond in supporting the channel, then why not check out my Patreon? The link is in the description as always. And speaking of which, a massive thank you to all my patrons. All you guys are legends. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see all you guys next time. <laughs>